Let's talk about suturing of a single implant, right? So implants in there is underneath the bone there. Um, also to keep in mind because of your lingualized incision in the beginning, check out where it is, right? So you put your implant in and see how the implant is right over the, the bulk of this keratized tissue is covering the entire implant. Um, as opposed to if you were doing a mid-crestal incision, your incision line would be over the middle of the implant. Uh, that means bacteria can get in there very easily. So if you have the bulk of your tissue that's over the top of the implant, now when you do your suture, your implant is protected by this tissue here over the top of it. So super, super important. Uh, some of the sutures that we like to use, one is PGCL. Um, I get this one from AD Surgical. I like it because it's a little bit stretchy. It's pretty cool. It is resorbable. My other suture that I use very, very commonly is PTFE, um, also 4.0. For PTFE, I usually get a 13 millimeter needle. Um, for PGCL, I usually get um, a little bit bigger of one. Usually, like the I think it's like the 16 inch, 16 or 19 inch. So with suturing, um, what I'll usually do is. Uh, I'll have my assistant, I'll put this Minnesota here and have my assistant grab it. Then I have my two hands to myself for free. And at that point, what I have in my hands are a tissue force up and a needle driver, right? Suturing is super important. Oh my gosh. I wish people would really understand how important suturing is. Uh, finishing this case and making sure things don't come back out is, is one of the most important thought, things that you can possibly do. So let's go a quick suture here. For these, I usually just put a simple interrupted in there. I usually do about two, two to three of them. And you want a good bite of the tissue. You want at least three millimeters of tissue in your bite. And this model is very hard to get this through. There's definitely some other models out there that are way easier. So if you're trying to practice your suturing, Ask us, we'll get you some recommendations on some models that are way easier to work with. So I like to pull it through and you don't want to have a really long tail because you're just wasting a suture and at that point you could go through another pack of sutures when you don't really have to. So you have suture up now and you have a string on this side, the shorter end, but see how short it is, it's not too long. Then you go two forward, two or three. Uh, I usually do three on this one, two, three. And you grab it and you lay, and see if you, if you look into the, see if you look into the suture, see how it's wanting to get pulled this way. A lot of times the mistakes are if you start pulling it this way, see how it's twisted? But if you put it down and it's twisted, it won't actually hold, it'll loosen up. So it's important to make sure you're laying down your suture flat. And right here, it lays down flat, like this way. Like that. And then you're gonna go two backwards and grab it. And at that point, it's the other way that it wants to lay flat. Not the same way, because if you do it the same way, it gets twisted. Right there, and then you go one more here and one that way back. So I usually go two, three, one, one for those. And then I'll put it. And I usually grab both of these for the assistant when we do it. So I'll grab both with this, with my hemostat, and then I kind of get out of the way for the assistant, and I lift it up in the air, just to kind of help make their lives a little bit easier when they try to flip it. That way. Same thing here. For these, I would recommend doing two to three of them.
And again, short tail. And of course, since this is the model the teacher came off. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, because I had priorly already taken that off. And then two back. Make sure it's lying flat. And then one forward, one forward, and one reverse. And same thing, I kind of grab it upwards and hold it up direction. So that way your assistant can clip it. And she's not stabbing the patient by accident instead. And then I would add a last uh, suture there to finish it. Alternative sutures, you could do quite a few different things here if you really wanted to. You could do a horizontal mattress where you start on this side, you go in towards the buckle, out towards the lingual here, and then you go towards this side, the mesial, and you go in towards the lingual, out towards the buckle, and then you're going to tie it right there. That hikes the tissue up. And then after that, what I'd recommend is placing like a simple interrupted over the top. Usually would be two of them, one here and one here. So the tissue is up. And when you're doing a simple one and you're tying it together, it's pressing the tissue down. So a lot of time with suturing, especially if you have vertical releases, it's important to integrate a horizontal component to the suturing as well as um, a simple suture to tie the tissue down.